Mars speaks more languages than you do, and I'm going to show you the six most important languages. I built my own electric cars by mixing and matching components from different cars and making them speak to each other. So, if you want to understand how cars work and all the dozens of sensors talk to each other, let's look into the six languages that they speak now. All right, our first contender, Automotive Ethernet. It's very new, it's two wires, it's very fast, and you can have up to, I don't know, 60 million devices or something crazy like that on it. It's essentially the same as your network at home, but simplified for automotive. You can stream HD video on it, such as this one, so it's great for collecting sensor data and bring that to a computing unit for say, autonomous driving or something like that, right? So you've got a bunch of video feeds and you've got sensor feeds and all that and all the data really quickly needs to get somewhere. Um, the drawbacks are it's very new and it's very expensive compared to the other contenders that we've got here for automotive communication. So if you need high bandwidth applications where you need to send loads and loads of data around, obviously a network cable is the best you can do, right? So in the next five or 10 years, with cars becoming more and more complex, you're gonna see more automotive ethernet, I'm sure. Which brings us to the next one, the CAN bus. You've got two wires, CAN high and CAN low, and you can have hundreds of devices on it. It's still pretty, pretty fast. You can transmit about 100 book pages, uh, like a physical, physical book uh, a second on that bus. Um, it's very resilient. You've got a so-called a differential signal. That means on the car can high line, uh, the signal goes upwards and on the can low line, the signal goes downwards. If that signal is interrupted by noise, electrical noise uh, fr from elsewhere, um, you measure the difference between the high and the low. So even if both of these signals are lifted up or both of these are pushed down, the difference between them is still the same, which makes this very, very resilient for automotive applications and certain industrial applications even. So the CAN bus at the moment is clearly the king of uh, communication in a car. You're gonna have loads of CAN, CAN bus devices in every modern electric car. Ethernet and CAN are kind of the, they can do long distances, they can do loads of devices, and they're rather fast. Um, they're definitely the kings of transmitting data, uh, longer distance and having large networks. So the next four, are going to be smaller. Some of them are going to be on chip, just simpler and older as well, actually. We're, we're moving into the 80s for some of these. So the next one, UART. UART is limited to two devices that can talk in both directions, bi-directional. Um, UART is used on chips or maybe in a daisy chain if you want more than two devices. So you can chain them up, right? You can, you can, you can have uh, one chip talk to the next and then add its own data and then talk to the next and then talk to the next and talk to the next. And if it is interrupted at any one pace, everything falls down, right? I looked this up, so you can go up to 15 meters apparently with UART as well. But the further you go, the more likely you are to, you know, get problems with noise. So typically, you will end up with distances of, I don't know how long this is, 30 centimeters or like a foot and a half or something like that. That's kind of as long as you want to go with UART. Sometimes you optimize for stuff that's easy to reason about and CAN and Ethernet are annoying to reason about because there's loads of stuff going on. So UART certainly shines if you want something simpler um, and just have two devices talk to each other. Um, the next one is SPI. If you want something like UART, but a little bit faster, but not quite as fast as Ethernet, and you want many devices, then SPI is a candidate. SBI has a minimum of three wires and um, you can have, I think, 128 devices or something like that on it. The problem with SBI is that you need different wiring to switch between the devices. So um, again, you will typically find it on a chip or in very short ribbon cables, again, up to this length or something like that. The next one is I2C. I2C has got two bus lines and many, many devices in it. 127 you can you can put on I2C, but it is much slower than SPI. No, it is the same speed as UART. So I2C is another um, protocol to talk for devices on a circuit board. So then the last one is the LIN bus, which is very, very slow, but you will also find it in modern cars and it will typically be used for something where you want to save cost and where you have to, where there's very little data that you need to transmit. Only one wire for the LIN bus and applications where you need to send very, very little data is for example, haters, AC compressors, or turning on and off pumps uh, or reading sensors 
not very often. So for a heater, you're gonna say oh, on or off, or if it's more advanced, you go, you know, this many degrees or this many degrees, and you only wanna adjust that every few minutes or so. So really comparatively little data. I think the speed is like two, two newspaper articles a second or something for the Linbus. And I hope this helped you now get a big picture understanding of what languages your car will speak. Um, just to recap, we've got Automotive Ethernet, uh, we've got CAN, we've got UART, SPI, I2C, and LIN. And uh, Ethernet and CAN are quite complex, but they support many, many devices and very high data rates. UART, SPI, and I2C, and LIN are for like more on-chip communication or simple, simple networks for simpler sensors or point-to-point -point networks with SPI and I2C are very, very old, and going back to the 80s, and LIN being the slowest of the pack, which you're using just to turn pumps on and off. Um, I hope this gave you a big picture and um, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.